This video is about the radio explosion in the 1960s. Hello, I'm Peter and you're watching Long in the Tooth Television. It all happened in the 1960s. We had fashion changes, art changes, culture, lifestyles. The whole, the world really changed in the 1960s. But this is specifically about radio and what happened to radio in the 1960s. I think the first thing to mention is the hardware. The hardware changed. Before the 60s, we didn't really have effective portable radios. There were portable radios before the 60s, but they were great big heavy clumbersome things. They required, well, they ran on valves for a start. Valves had heaters in them. Valves or tubes, they were called. They were in, in the radio, so you've got to have a high tension and a low tension battery. Believe me, it was only the rich and famous or the privileged or the hobbyist, really, that would go on a picnic with a portable radio before the 1960s. In the 60s, we got the transistor, which just required a tiny little 9-volt battery, and you could run all these wonderful devices and pick up your stations and go out and put the thing in your pocket. But, of course, what were we listening to in the 60s? We've got a brilliant range of radio which had exploded in that decade. Let me tell you where it all started. Started with this guy called Todd Storrs. This, uh, this is the 50s now. We've gone back to the 50s to learn about Todd Storrs, K-O-W-H, Nebraska. He was sitting in a coffee bar one day and he was listening to the music, watching the youngsters as they put on the records. They put a dime in, they put on the records. And he noticed that the, these kids were putting the same records on. Jill would come up and put a record on. And then Jack would come on a little bit later. He'd come up to the jukebox. He'd put the same one on. So in a given week, the same records were rotating all the time. You could sit in the coffee bar and largely hear the same music over and over, repeated. He thought, this is going to work on radio. And that's exactly what he did. Now, the whole thing was really realised, although it was Todd Storrs that reportedly thought of it. It was a guy called Gordon McClendon from KLIF, the mighty 1190 in Dallas. Of course, Dallas is really where the top 40 format began, because it was quite handy that something else was happening in Dallas. PAMs were being formed, PAMs of Dallas, bringing all the great jingles out. So what we had, we had the birth of the top 40 format in the 1960s in Dallas, bringing us across the USA, really, all those brilliant radio stations that played top 40 music on those transistor radios that you could now buy so cheaply. The top 40 format, which is essentially songs, jingles, DJ. You've got to have all those three. Take one out, it's no good. Songs, jingles, DJ. And that's how it all happened. And really, when we bring that up to today's thinking, listening to music on the radio today, we're sort of still looking at the same thing. This is a typical clock of, of radio stations today. It's still the same. You might have the news, you'll have your songs, you'll have ads, jingle songs, ads, jingle songs, ads, jingle songs in that area. DJs will speak around here wherever they're allowed to, some more, some less. In the 60s, of course, they were talking all the time. But that's how it all formed. That's when it happened. It really was born in the 1960s. We did have this in the UK. I uh, missed out the UK. Uh, we had the antiquated BBC, which had little or no music on it. But to get our style, to get our sound, top 40 sound, we had to have pirate radio, which broadcast from ships uh, three and a half miles off coast. Uh, where the, they, they couldn't get them, they were legal, because they were not in the jurisdiction of the UK. We can probably do a whole different video on that. But that's the sound, that's the culture, that's where it all started. The 1960s, where there really was a music and a radio explosion. The radio needed the music, and the music needed the radio. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe. This has been a Long in the Tooth television production. Subscribe to Peter's channel for more short bites of information for the radio generation.